In this section, let's talk about external device control. The XVS switcher can handle up to 12 external devices at any one time. Those devices can be controlled in most of the common use protocols out there today. Uh, PBUS, VTR, Odetics, and VDCP. We're running two servers today in VDCP protocol. So let me put those up on our air and program and go to device control. I have device one and device two that I'm bringing in, in VDCP. So if I look at my file list on device one, I can go to a file list update and it's now going out and talking to the server, finding out what clips are on there and it's bringing those clips into my menu system. So now I can scroll down those numbers and I can come down to choose the clip that I want, Finger Lakes, and hit load. It just loaded my clip. I can do the same thing over here for device two. I could load a clip or I can choose another one and load that. Now we're going to come up, now that I have my devices loaded, I'm going to come back up to the trackball module. We've been using this module a lot. It, can, it has three main functions. It controls my DVEs, it can control my resizers, but I'm going to come here, go to device control, and again hit device one for device one. That's what I see on program can also see here, I get a readout when I come to device control, and it's showing me the file name, the clip name that I just loaded, the current time code, and a start time code if there was one marked. I can hit play on this and play it manually right here. I can come to jog, jog it back, jog it forward, or shuttle it forward within that time code and those parameters. Come through, hit play again, okay? I can even mark it in and out if I wanted. I can come and sit mark in, and then when I hit Q, it goes to that mark in and I can play it again. So I have all the manual controls right here for that device. I can do the same thing for device two, which is over in my uh, preview monitor, and I can jog that one forward to get a little bit of movement or shuttle and see her start to move, and then I can hit play. And then she's in super slow-mo, so she's moving quite slowly, but that is how this was recorded. I'm going to take that jog back and jog her back to a start. So if I wanted to queue these up this way, let me go back to device one and hit queue, and it should go to my endpoint. If I wanted to recall these way, not manually play them or recall them that way, I can have an effects register that controls device one and two. Get 250 of these registers um, within the system. So if I go to effects and I go to device one and device two and I call up an empty register, zero dot, number three is empty, and I'm actually creating a timeline. I've got a device one and device two effect three going there. If I go to my device menu again and I go to queue up and play, you can see I have my current time code and my current clips all set. So if I came over to here and I marked it in on the device one, I could come over to device two and I mark another in. Now I've marked it in and it should give me a keyframe, as you can see right here, automatically on my timeline. I could have highlighted both on the trackball module and hit it in. Now I should have that as a stored register. So I can hit store, three, enter, recall those, and it queues up to my clip, right to my endpoint. And now if I hit run, both play simultaneously. So I've just um, basically created an effect that's going to queue these devices and to a certain time code and play them automatically. I can do that another way also. I don't have to have an effect registered to do that. I can actually come back, let's go to the file list. I'm going to start with device two and I'm going to requeue. And I'm going to go back to the file list for device one and we'll requeue another uh, finger legs. I can do the same thing with a macro. So we went over macros earlier. I'm going to find an empty register on my macros. Bank three. Macros are going to remember that, that uh, load of the devices from my menu here. So if I go into record on a macro, I'm going to make one for device number one. I in record on the macro and I'm going to requeue this. And that was an event in my macro. I'm going to pause now give it a pause of about seven frames, and then I'm going to play device one. And that is remembered in the macro when I store that. Now, if I came and did a load of another device, now you see it queued the macro, 
cued the clip and played it automatically for me when I hit that macro, just like that. I could do the same thing for device number two. Um, I could go to macro, macro 32 for device two, come to device two, cue up my clip, give that a pause, seven frames, and then come over to device two and hit play. Again, three event macro, and I could store that. So now if I were to have a different clip called up, I call up the clip and it should, and it is playing automatically for me. So I could then take those macros and attach them to buttons on the side of the Mac or just recall them this way. So if I were to take an attachment of macro 31, I could actually say, I'm going to come to macro attachment and do a pre or post macro attachment. I'm going to do that to um, VTR6 on this case. So I'm going to do pre macro, attach it right into the preset button for VTR6. So again, if I'm on program on VTR2 and I preset VTR6 with macro attachment enable on, you saw that it queued that in preview and automatically played it and I could dissolve to it that, just that quickly. So it's an interesting way to queue up the macro really quick, dissolve to it. So there's a quick overview of the external device control. I was able to take two server channels, control them manually through the trackball module, recall and playback through an effect register for device one and two, or recall and playback through a macro. Makes for a very versatile system and up to 12 devices at any one time within the XVS switcher system.